I don't believe this. Welcome to Storyflex. In this video, we will explain pathology. This movie tells the story of some intern doctors who plays a game in which one tries to commit murder, then the others compete to determine the victim's cause of death. How is actually their game will end? Let's find out in pathology. Pathology begins with a videotape of a corpse whose mouth is moved by interns' doctors. After that, the doctor's oath was shown, which meant that doctors had to do their best to help their patients not harm them. The scene then shows a man named Teddy Gray who is in the room with his fiancée, Gwen Wilson. Teddy is a doctor who studies forensic pathology, a branch of pathology that determines the cause of death based on examination of corpses or autopsies. Teddy is the best graduate of Harvard Medical School, and that day he will be joining the most prestigious pathology internship program at Metropolitan University Medical Center. Teddy was greeted by Ben Stravinsky, one of the interns there. Ben, who idolizes Teddy because of his intelligence, is very happy with his participation in the pathology internship program. Ben then showed Teddy the pathology room they used to use. Teddy then met Dr. Morris, an expert doctor who guides the interns there. Dr. Morris already knew Teddy's famous reputation. Dr. Morris then introduces Teddy to an intern who is also as intelligent as him. The intern was named Jake Gallo. Jake's analysis also often helps the FBI to uncover murder cases. Teddy and the interns are then confronted with the corpse of a child. Dr. Morris then ordered the interns to diagnose the corpse and explain the cause of the girl's death. The other interns' diagnoses were less thorough, so their descriptions were inaccurate. But Teddy was able to analyze precisely because he never ruled out the psychological factor of corpses. Even Teddy finds out the activities they often do in their lives. The interns in forensic pathology seem to dislike Teddy for being too smart, especially Jake, who has considered him as an eternal rival. But Teddy didn't want to worry about the hostility shown by the other interns towards him. He just wants to focus on building a career as the best forensic pathologist. The next day, Teddy and the other interns are confronted by the corpse of a man having a seizure. Teddy swiftly stabbed the back of the neck to sever the connection between the nerves and the brain in the corpse. After the internship, Ben again praised Teddy's intelligence and alertness for the incident. Teddy did a great job, performed autopsies, and diagnosed the causes of death of corpses day by day. To relieve stress due to routine work that is quite tiring for the body and mind, Jake and his friends take him to a nightclub to have fun. Another intern, Juliet, seemed interested in Teddy, even though she has been in a relationship with Jake for quite a while. Jake then took Teddy to another bar and had drinks together. After that, Jake and Teddy stopped by a place that was a bit hidden. A burly man guarded the entrance of the place. It turns out that not anyone can enter the location of the prostitution. Even Jake had to be willing to spend quite a bit to get in with Teddy. But when he got inside, Teddy, who was already heavily drunk, got even dizzier and finally unconscious. The next day, Teddy was late for work and still felt a little dizzy from the last night's hangover. After changing clothes and entering the pathology room, he was surprised by the figure of the prostitution guard, who was now lying stiffly on the autopsy table. He came out for a while to cool off in the locker room. He tried to remember what had happened after he and Jake had entered the club. Meanwhile, in the autopsy room, Jake and his friends begin to diagnose the corpse's condition and reveal the chronology of the guard's murder. An intern named Griffin said the guard must have been stabbed multiple times and his head badly injured. The other intern doctors also came up with various scenarios for the chronology. But none of that comes close to the truth. After calming down, Teddy then presented the chronology of the guard's murder in great detail. According to his analysis, the man was initially hit with a blunt object, then poisoned with potassium cyanide. Six to seven hours later, the assailant stabbed him multiple times and shot him in the head. Everyone thought that the chronology of the murders described by Teddy sounded quite strange, but Teddy didn't care. He was very confident in his analysis. In the evening, Jake takes Teddy to the basement with many hallways and rooms no longer used. Jake then entered a room, and the body of the guard was there. Jake asked Teddy again about the cause of the guard's death. But Teddy even said that Jake was the one who had killed the guard. Jake didn't deny Teddy's accusations and instead said that this was a game for him and Teddy had entered his game. Jake thought that killing some bad guys wouldn't be a big deal because they deserved to die. He then asked Teddy again about the cause of the guard's death. Teddy still defended his opinion and insisted that the cause of the guard's death was potassium cyanide poisoning. But Jake said his guess was wrong. 
Teddy, starting to get annoyed with Jake's game, finally leaves the room. He then sees Juliet, Griffin, and another intern joining Jake to do the terrible game. Arriving at the apartment, Teddy was confused. On the one hand, Jake and his friends have committed a crime, and he should report their actions to the authorities. But on the other hand, Jake's words have a point. This game is very challenging, because the more complicated the cause of a person's death, the more interesting it will be to diagnose. This game will develop his analytical skills. Teddy then called Jake and said he would report his actions to the police. But Jake said that he would not dare report it because he had placed the evidence somewhere to point it directly at him. So that Teddy would be accused of being the perpetrator of the guard's murder. After all, Jake was sure that Teddy would be interested in this game. After doing further analysis, Teddy then went to Jake and said that the cause of death of the guard was not because of potassium cyanide, but because of nitric acid. Teddy then describes how Jake killed the guard by mixing nitric acid and ethanol and alcohol to disguise the taste. Hours later, Jake stabs the guard and shoots him in the head to make it difficult to diagnose the cause of death. Teddy's explanation was so detailed and accurate that Jake was amazed by it. The next day, Juliet comes to Teddy and asks him to join the game. But Teddy hasn't decided whether to join or not. She then handed Teddy a piece of paper that had a patient's room number written on it. After visiting the room, Teddy found out that the patient being treated was a murderer who had executed his own family and tried to commit suicide. Teddy is increasingly hesitant to make a choice whether he will maintain the medical code of ethics to save humans or even be persuaded to follow Jake's game and pursue a misguided ambition by toying with other people's lives. Teddy then took the last option. He feels challenged to carry out the murder in a way as complex as possible so that Jake and the others have difficulty guessing the victim's cause of death. After all, the patient's condition was also very serious and would eventually die. After committing his first murder, Teddy felt very guilty. But Jake calmed him down and said it wasn't guilt, it was fear of being found out. Jake then had Teddy come to the room in the basement, and he has officially joined the game. The next day, Juliet took Teddy to her father's house and told him that her father was a pedophile and had abused her. Juliet then asks Teddy to help her kill her father because the day is her turn in the game. Long story short, Teddy and Juliet managed to kill Juliet's father. His body was immediately taken to the autopsy room to find the cause of the man's death. At first, Jake and his friends are confused, but then Griffin guessed if the man died of difficulty breathing and absorbing oxygen from sucking in too much liquid nitrogen. Griffin questions how a woman like Juliet would bring down a man who weighs much more than her. After hearing Griffin's explanation, Jake realized that Juliet must have been helped by someone and accused Teddy. Jake then said that the man they killed was not Juliet's father, as she had told him. Teddy went to Juliet and demanded an explanation from her. He is very upset that Juliet doesn't care for the victim and picks him at random, but Teddy also couldn't deny that he was very interested in Juliet. The game continues, and the murders committed by Jake and his friends are getting crazier as they become more and more obsessed with carrying out as complex a murder as possible. The others no longer kill bad people but any innocent victims as long as they are easy to kill. On the other hand, Teddy and Juliet become closer and often have sex on various occasions. Teddy also increasingly uses illegal drugs. His condition is no longer as good as it used to be because he often wakes up late and sleeps while attending lectures. Dr. Morris, who noticed the changes in Teddy, then came to him and said that he knew Teddy had been using drugs a lot lately. Dr. Morris then suggested that Teddy start thinking about his career again and stay away from Jake and his friends. Teddy then visits Gwen and her family on vacation. Gwen is very happy to finally be able to meet her fiancé again after so long. Gwen's family was very happy with the arrival of Teddy. Gwen's father even praised Teddy's intelligence and said that the man would be successful and get the job he wanted in the best company. Gwen then decided to stay temporarily with Teddy in his apartment while waiting for the trial. Arriving at the apartment, Teddy frantically cleaned up his messy things. Gwen saw a pipe of methamphetamine on the table. Teddy argued that the pipe belonged to his friend. Teddy tries to convince his fiancé that he is not a drug user and Gwen believes him. In the evening, Teddy takes Gwen to a party attended by the doctors. There, they meet Jake and Juliet. Teddy then introduced his fiancé to his two fellow doctors. Seeing Jake is a bit impolite, Gwen is sure that Jake was a drug user who left a pipe of methamphetamine in Teddy's apartment. On the other hand, Juliet, who was jealous of Gwen, continued to be cynical about her. After that, Juliet and Jake are seen fighting because Jake finally finds out that Juliet likes Teddy. After midnight, Jake called Teddy and asked him to come over to his usual place. 
how shocked Teddy was to find out that Jake had killed three women in the basement, and there was no other intern besides the two of them. Teddy said Jake had lost his mind, but Jake doesn't care and forces Teddy to join the game. After successfully guessing the cause of the death of the three women and finishing Jake's game, Teddy immediately left. Arriving at his apartment Teddy was intercepted by Juliet. Teddy pushed her into a slightly hidden corner and asked why she came to him again. But Juliet said that she had broken up with Jake and started flirting with Teddy. Juliet didn't care even though Teddy was engaged. Unbeknownst to them, Jake caught them from inside the car and became very angry. The next day, Teddy goes to Jake and says he wants to stop the game. Of course, Jake forbade it and told Teddy that nothing could ever get out of the game. Jake then mentions Gwen, which infuriates Teddy instantly. But he seemed relaxed and told Teddy that they were all having a meeting tomorrow night and Teddy had to come. However, unbeknownst to Jake and his friends, Teddy has prepared a plan. The appointed night arrived. Except for Teddy, everyone was gathered in the basement, around the autopsy table where Juliet lay lifeless on top of it. As they prepare to perform an autopsy and diagnose Juliet's cause of death, Jake realizes that the room has been filled with gas. When one of them lit a match, suddenly the gas pipe above their heads exploded and a great fire broke out. Turns out Teddy planned to kill them all. The next day, Teddy came to work as usual. Even though it was an unusual morning because many police cars, fire trucks and ambulances were there. With an innocent face, Teddy asked Dr. Morris what had happened last night. Dr. Morris said that there had been a gas pipe explosion in the basement that killed four interns. Teddy immediately panicked because there were supposed to be five doctors there, and he was very afraid that Jake was still alive. Teddy then called Gwen. Because Gwen never answered his phone, Teddy then rushed to his apartment. When he got there, Teddy finds Gwen lying in bed, lifeless. Jake had killed her. Teddy, who feels very devastated by Gwen's death, intends to avenge his death on Jake. Dr. Morris then goes to Teddy and offers his condolences for Gwen's death. Dr. Morris said the police were investigating the fire and suspected Jake, who was missing. And because the cause of Gwen's death is unknown, they also have to perform an autopsy on Gwen's body. Teddy asked permission to autopsy his fiancée, and Dr. Morris gave permission. Teddy then performed an autopsy on Gwen and wrote down the autopsy report, results to the police and Gwen's parents. Moments later, Jake finally appears and attacks Teddy while he is alone in his office. Jake was furious at Teddy, not because he had tried to kill him, but because the autopsy results Teddy had reported on Gwen were completely inaccurate and gave the impression it was just a trivial murder. In fact, according to Jake, Gwen's murder is the greatest masterpiece he has ever made. Jake, who had thought of Teddy as his eternal rival, always wanted to beat him. And now his wish was fulfilled because Teddy was finally unable to determine the cause of his own fiancé's death. But then Teddy laughed, and in a mocking tone, he told Jake that he deliberately faked Gwen's autopsy results so her family wouldn't feel sad and devastated when they found out the real cause of death. Teddy knew how Jake had killed Gwen. After saying that, Ben appeared behind Jake and drugged him. It turns out that Teddy has conspired with Ben to kill Jake the same way Jake killed Gwen. First, they sedated him to paralyze him, then injected potassium cyanide into his vein under the armpit. Ben then dripped nitroglycerin on his tongue to slow him down. The death process takes at least 7 minutes, and while in that state, a person will feel as if he is asleep and can still hear and see his surroundings. But this time, Teddy and Ben will vivisection on Jake's body while he is still alive and the film ends.